All right, so let's take a look at some of the different phases. The solid is going to be the lowest energy phase. That capital E means energy. It has a definite shape and also a definite volume. A liquid, the molecules are a little bit farther apart. It's a medium energy. There's still a definite volume, but it takes the shape of its container. And then the gas, the molecules are really far apart. It's the highest energy state that we talked about, and it takes the shape and the volume of its container. The law of conservation of mass says that the mass of the reactants have to be equal to the mass of the products. In other words, what's on each side of the equation all has to add up to be the same mass. So for example, if you take H2O, water, and split it up into hydrogen gas, into oxygen gas, you have to have the same amount on the left side as you do on the right side. So if you start with 30 grams of H2O, and then you make 10 grams of hydrogen, how many grams of oxygen do you make? We know it's got to be the same, so then we can just solve for x. It'd be 20 grams of oxygen. Let's take a look at some physical properties. Physical properties are divided into extensive properties and intensive properties. And then on the other side, we have chemical properties. So an extensive physical property would be like mass or length. An intensive physical property would be something like boiling point or melting point or density. And the chemical properties would be reactivity or like the chemical formula of a compound. <clears throat> so the difference is extensive properties depend on the amount of something. So if you have more of something, it might be longer or heavier. And intensive properties don't change no matter how much you have of the stuff. Take a look at the, um, the visual that we used in class for, the, um, for how we classify different types of matter. I want to remind you that a homogeneous mixture is also called a solution. For example, salt water. You would say that you have a salt water solution. It's because it's a homogeneous mixture. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the different separation techniques. Distillation is separating by boiling point. Crystallization is separating a pure solid from a liquid, so like rock candy. Filtration is like how you make coffee, You're using a filter to separate a solid from a liquid. Chromatography is what we did in class with the different color markers, where we let the different components run across the filter and they separated by their size. And finally, sublimation is an ability of certain compounds to go straight from the solid phase to the gas phase, skipping the liquid phase. So if you have a mixture of different things and some of them sublimate and some of them do not, you can separate them by allowing the one compound to sublimate. Physical changes versus chemical changes. A physical change is going to be something like any phase change or physically crumpling something. Chemical changes are going to be changes that actually change um, what your compound is. So you have different um, products after, after the change. So that would be like fermentation or burning or oxidizing or iron rusting. The, um, we talked about mass percentage. So um, the law of definite proportions says that no matter how much of a compound you have, it's going to be composed of the same elements by the same percentages, the same ratios, always. So here we have the breakdown of sucrose, and you can see the equation down here at the bottom to find the mass percentage of an element. So, um, Let's do an example. Here we have sucrose broken down. It's the same information, just in a different display. And we can see the mass percentages over here on the right side. 
So how much carbon would be in 500 grams of sucrose? So the mass of the element is what we don't know. The mass of the compound is 500. Percent mass is 42.2. How do we know that? Let's go back. You can look, find carbon on the table. The mass percentage, 42.2%. Oops, I went too far that time. The mass of the compound is 500, the percent mass 42.2%, just from the table. And then here is our equation. So then if we plug in for all of our variables, we have a nice, um, a nice solvable algebraic equation there. So then we just have to get x all by itself. Cross multiply, and then you have to divide by 100. And then you can just enter that into your calculator and solve for x. And that will tell you how many grams um, of your element you have. Let's do another example. Maybe we'll change the variable. How about a sample contains 100 grams of hydrogen, 50 grams of oxygen. What is the mass percentage of hydrogen? So here we have different variables given. We're given the mass of the element. We know the mass of the compound because we can add it together. If you have 100 of hydrogen and 50 of oxygen, <clears throat> your total is going to be 150. So we're trying to find the mass percentage. So here is our formula again. We can substitute in, um, or we can, just, we can just plug in everything we have and get the mass percentage, 67%. The periodic table, you've got to know the difference between periods and groups. The periods are the rows. Going down, there should be seven rows. And the group is the column, all the way from 1 to 18, also called families. Most of the elements are metals. I shaded the metals in. Um, with yellow. Looks like I forgot to shade the ones down at the bottom. Let me see if I can do that real quick. These are also metals. Um, and then the metalloids will shade in that, uh, in that pink color. And the non-metals are in green. Alright guys, that's pretty much all you need to know. I hope that this was helpful.